Red vs Blue has many villains, bad guys, psychopaths, psychotic individuals some like to call them. If anybody makes my girlfriend cranky and psychotic, it's gonna be me. Because having friends would ruin the whole psychotic loner bitch thing you've got going on. But are they really? Perhaps they just suffer from APD, antisocial personality disorder. Now some of you right about now might be thinking, I have that, I'm an antisocial person. But chances are, I'm hoping, you're wrong. You're just misinformed. Antisocial personality disorder is also known as sociopathy, a mental condition where the person consistently shows no regard for right or wrong. People with antisocial personality disorder have a tendency to have no sort of guilt or any kind of remorse for their actions. They will antagonize others, make them the villain from their point of view. They will manipulate or treat others harshly, solely for their own benefit. So which characters can be classified with which disorder? Let's start with Agent Main, the meta to be more specific. And I'm a little bit cuckoo, gaga, slightly deranged. If you're going to call him psychotic, that does not mean he is psychopathic. Neither does calling someone antisocial mean they are unsociable. Psychotic individuals have lost touch with the real world, most notably by delusions and hallucinations. The meta isn't exactly Agent Main, because Sigma is to blame for his newfound psychotic nature. Agent Main was the muscle, the brute of Project Freelancer. He killed as a soldier. He didn't seem to go out of his way to murder just for fun. But when Sigma filled his mind with such delusions of meta stability, he changed Main. But why do I keep just calling the meta psychotic, instead of calling him a psychopath? I do that because someone who is just psychotic does such awful things because of the delusions and hallucinations he is experiencing. A psychopath who is also psychotic will still be heartless, even without these delusions and hallucinations. Sigma can be classified as a psychopath who is also psychotic. Sigma may be an AI but that doesn't free him from being classified as such. His mind is clear. He knows what he is doing, and he is doing it willingly and forcing Agent Main to do it for him. Main might have been a bit psychopathic going into it, but that doesn't mean he turned into a psychotic psychopath. On the surface, it seems as though Agent Main knew what he was doing. He knew he was a soldier, and he knew he had to kill, and he did it. But Sigma changed Main into a psychopath motivated by delusions. So I'm a little bit crazy, out of my mind. Now earlier I brought up antisocial personality disorder. While Maine isn't the most social person in the series, he wasn't the antagonist that I had in mind when thinking about this. So, which villain am I thinking about? Tex? South Dakota? Felix. Now that might raise an eyebrow, but as previously talked about, antisocial personality disorder, APD, doesn't mean he can't talk to people. That term is unsociable. Antisocial means antithetical to social norms. It violates people's rights in big ways. An antisocial person can be either sociable or unsociable, meaning that they are either fully capable of talking to others, or they completely lack that ability to communicate. Felix is sociable. The sociable person can be a superficially charming individual because that charm that Felix is exhibiting is meant to manipulate others. His extroverted personality did its duty in fooling those he wished to fool. The Reds and Blues were not likely to trust someone like Locus, who is silent and intimidating. But for someone like Felix, who is a master of manipulating people, getting them to trust him through his own personality, for his own agenda, his psychopathic behaviors work perfectly for what he's doing. So much so, that it might have been a factor that ultimately led to Locus's betrayal of him. The thing about Felix and his psychopathy is that he and other psychopaths lack a conscience. They should know the difference between right and wrong, but at heart, they don't understand it, and ultimately, they don't care. Felix doesn't care that he's killing an entire planet of people so he can make a few bucks here and there. Maybe the world would be a happier place if everybody got crazy like me. But the term psychopath is used so often in context to killers such as Felix and Maine that people are overestimating the criminality, severity, and twistedness of most psychopaths. Not all of them are as clear-cut as they are made out to be. 
people tend to overlook that there are some psychopaths who are not physically aggressive in any way. A person with no conscience, no empathy anywhere in their soul, can choose whether or not they want to take part in violence or cruelty. Take for example, the counselor. We did not see him fight once. His mind was his greatest weapon, mainly used for interrogation purposes, something I may make a future video on. But the counselor, Price, let's call him since that's his name, because of his imprisonment for his affiliation with Project Freelancer, he turned on everyone for his own self-interest. He was trying to get Wash and Carolina killed. He was not clouded by any delusions. His mind was functioning perfectly fine all the way throughout his life and until his death. It wasn't until the release from his cell that he could be classified as a psychopath. The severity of his crimes, willing to have an entire planet kill itself, the twistedness of his actions, knowing every single weakness that former Project Freelancer agents have, it's kind of ironic that the man who knew most about psychology of others' brains became a psychopath himself. So here's a question for you. Do you think that psychopathic individuals can get better? The problem with psychopathy is that medication for it, believe it or not, doesn't exist. There is no way to make a psychopathic person grow a conscience. And typically other methods such as therapy don't mix well with them. If you were to take Felix and try and change him out of his psychotic mindset, it wouldn't work. They don't have the urge to change who they are because they aren't disturbed by what they are doing. What they are doing in their mind and perspective makes sense. Felix, for example, in a therapeutic environment might have been even worse for him because sometimes, especially in earlier psychopathic days of Felix's life before he honed his skill, therapy might have given him a chance to practice his manipulation of others and really figure out what he's doing and how he could do it better. Therapy usually isn't a wise idea for psychopathic individuals. So, what do you do with such people? Well, luckily for the Reds and Blues, they tend to just be killed off. Jail is probably the most common way to deal with them, but prison only lasts so long for psychopaths considering they usually find a way to get out. So, what was the point of this video? Well, I kinda just wanted to inform you more on psychopaths and psychotic nature, which I'm hoping I did. And with that said, that is going to do it for this video. I hope I informed you as to what I just said. If you liked this video, make sure to leave a like and comment down below as to what you think about these psychopaths. Subscribe if you're interested in more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video.